I just built this. In 1968, we came over to see the Calgary Stampede from Scotland. Yeah. And uh, we arrived in Montreal and we thought, ah, just a hop, skip and a jump to go to Calgary. Yeah. Go on a train three days and oh my heavens, sitting up on a train. So we got here and we were a week late. Mm. So guess what, we had to stay. We used to get pretty good deal on the fuel because you get a farm credit, right? But not now, fuel costs is same, basically the same as what you pay at the pumps, you know? It's, uh, hey, you gotta take a big breath because I tell you something, everything's going through the roof. For this week's episode of The Buffalo, we made our way out to Glen Gary Bison Ranch to talk to rancher Gary Sweetenham to learn a little bit about what it takes to raise bison, how people can get their hands on this incredible meat farmer direct, and about some of the increased costs ranchers are facing in this current climate, particularly ranchers out west. We also went for a bit of a ride and interviewed a bison. We're now on our way to the field to check out some of the bison here at Glen Gary Bison Ranch. Uh, very much looking forward to getting up close and personal with the big guys out here. All right, so we have got these bison here. First of all, I guess for people out there wondering, what is sort of the distinction between a bison and a buffalo for people who might get those mixed up? It's the same, it's the same animal. It's just, I think they use the bison as a slang. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, buffalo is a slang, pardon me. Yeah. And then it's the same animal. Yeah. There's only two different bison. It's what they call it. It's the woods. And these are all plains. Okay. And uh, I think we raise the plains because we get a good meat from uh, from a two and a half year old animal. Yeah. There's a lot more muscle on them. And so then that's the turnaround process from the little brand new ones to yearlings. By about two and a half years, you have a animal that's ready to farm effectively? Yeah, I just keep all the males for about two and a half years. And they're close to a thousand pounds to 1200 pounds yeah. by the time they're finished. And we just finish them on grass. There's no grain, popcorn, cornflakes put into them or nothing like that. So there's, uh, yeah, two and a half years. And they're close to a thousand to 1200 pounds then. All the rainwater comes off the, the roof of the arena, comes through this trench and then fills this up. So when those guys come over for a drink and there, all these brushes are set up so that they can get all their winter hair off it. And can you tell us everything that is actually used if anything is left to waste? No, off, uh, basically off this animal when they're slaughtered, we keep the head, we keep the hide, uh, it goes for leather. And sometimes in probably December, January, the hide's best for uh, like hair on, mm -hmm. like a robe yeah. with the hair on. And then the, the head we sell. And also we look after the ribs come from the animal itself, goes for pet food. The, the uh, stomach liner goes for tripe and the leg bones all go for marrow bones and the neck bones go to stores. so just about absolutely everything just being used about everything yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. just the, the guts itself is what's the remainder of the animal yeah. yeah this series is made possible by our friends at the alberta prosperity project you can learn more about them at albertaprosperityproject.com they are a massive grassroots initiative working on securing sovereignty and ensuring that alberta is as prosperous as it should be they've graciously come on and supported this initiative so we can get out here and share these important stories like no one else can we started this huh, i don't know about 20 years ago and the best thing to do is try and make as much as you can out of the whole animal. Yeah. And that's what we try to do. I just built this. In 1968, we came over to see the Calgary Stampede from Scotland. Yeah. And uh, we arrived in Montreal and we thought, ah, just a hop, skip and a jump to go to Calgary. Yeah. Go on a train three days and oh my heavens, sitting up on a train. So we got here and we were a week late. Mm -hmm. So guess what, we had to stay. So lots of people now obviously becoming increasingly concerned, uh, wanting to buy local, direct from farmers, concerned about supply chain. Uh, obviously you've got this great bison out here. Uh, how can people get involved if they actually want to come out and get some of this meat locally, sort of farmer direct? Uh, the best thing to do is contact the sewer website. It's glengarrybison.telus.net. And you, we usually can provide like packages uh, a family pack is a can, uh, like a cut from all around the animal. 
So you've got your tenor line, your strip lines, uh, your New Yorks, your uh, rib, uh, bison uh, ribeye, and all the kebab meat, and sirloin, and, and the sirloin butt. That's all the better cuts, and that's from this portion of the animal in a green chart. The lesser cuts, lesser tender cuts, would be all from the rump here, the brisket area, and then up here in the hump area. And this would be all that there. So you got your back ribs, your bottom round, your inside outside rounds, and eye around. That's, if it's a round, I usually say it's ground. It yeah. goes into burger. Well, I think to tell you the truth that everybody's so used to going to the Safeway or going to the co-op or whatever and getting that package, packaged food, but they don't know where that animal came from. So if they want to eat a lot of uh, beef or a lot of pig enough, I think myself, you should go to the farm that produces that. But the thing in these big stores, you don't know where it comes from. Right. You know, so I would rather see myself where that animal has been raised and how it's been looked after. If you see an animal that's got all oh, curly cues and mud in it, say, it's been lying in a feedlot yeah. for months on end or whatever to, to be to be uh, raised that way. I don't want to see that. I'd rather see the animal in the grass pasture and it's clean pasture, of course, and know where it came from. So what, what are the sort of, obviously besides sort of acquiring and breeding all that, what sort of costs are involved with raising these animals? The big cost right now is if in the winter time is if you don't grow your own hay, is hay prices. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest cost mm -hmm. because we don't feed them any other grains and stuff, but the biggest price for uh, raising these animals right now is because we've had such terrible weather like drought mm -hmm. and when the grass is just not growing like it should. Yeah. So you're not getting the pasture and you're not getting the hay, the quality hay it is you need, you know? Are, are those costs also, obviously like within, within the city, we are seeing prices go up on, on, on things. Well, Does that correspond? Yeah, exactly. What, uh, you, you, can't, you can't stay in business if you don't want to keep up with the inflation. Mm -hmm. So everything has to go up a little bit. I mean, I've got the same prices since uh, since last year, but everything has to go up because no matter what you do, you buy boxes, you buy strapping, you buy plastic bags for uh, packaging meat and stuff and cryovac bags, it goes up. So mm. guess what? It has to be handed over, yeah. you know? It's uh, one minute I'm paying $50 a bale, the next minute I'm paying $200 a bale. Yeah. So where does that go, exactly. you know? It goes back to the consumer, so... Consumer is not very pleased, but well, either we, we keep the meat production or we we yeah. lose it. Yeah, so it's the same as everybody. The same with cattle guys, sheep, whatever, pigs. You know, the cost of everything goes up. Yeah, and so that's the problem. It's tough. Certainly, lots of people in that same situation. For the oh, same story yeah, from it's, farmers. It's terrible, because you know, I mean, I think. The guys around here that, uh, that raise cattle, like grass-fed cattle, they still want three, six, fifty, nearly seven dollars a pound, yeah. you know, all hanging weight yeah. when they slaughter their animals. So it all mounts up. Because yeah. if you have a thousand pound animal, by the time you get it slaughtered, it's a five, five to six hundred dollar bill. And then by the time you cut and wrap, there's another 300 bucks to it. And Basically, you come from, say, a thousand pounds down to about 600 pounds hot hanging weight. Mm -hmm. So you got 300 pounds a side. So they still have to charge a decent amount of money to get what they call it in the back, yeah. in the back from it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, uh, it's really, a, it's quite a deal. You wouldn't believe people from Europe want to see a close up a bison. So what it is, they come from with a German Swiss, with a people from Israel, France, all over Europe, Egypt and uh, Britain, of course, Australia, all over the world. Yeah. They've, they've come on holiday. Usually during the stampede, you see more people from all over the world yeah. because they're here to see the stampede. And all of a sudden they look at a website and they go, we can see a buffalo close up. Yeah. So they can, so they come out here. Usually stampede is usually the busiest time. Of, uh, for us. Well, yeah, I think if you go buy a new diesel truck, I've got two turbo diesel, uh, Cummings turbo diesels. If I 
bought those trucks now, I'd be close to close to hundred thousand dollars if you wanted a fully loaded truck. Well, in two thousand six, when I bought that dually truck, it was forty five thousand. Yeah. That's a big difference, isn't it? Yeah. You know. And then you also mentioned even uh, stuff coming in from BC. There's surcharges on pallets. If I go to BC for my product boxes, I used to get the product boxes for around a dollar, a dollar, dollar and a half a piece. They're two and a half dollars now. Plus, there's a surcharge of per pallet of fifty dollars, because of all the different problems I've had in BC with gas prices, with the with the the roads being washed out, yeah. and they have to go longer ways and stuff. So they just stick fifty dollars on each per pallet. So that means like an eight hundred dollar bill more on the boxes I get every year. Well, so the trucks cost more, the pallets cost more. Not only that, you're having all these additional costs, but you're also pay paying the elevated fuel costs, all that as a farmer. Exactly, yeah, because I mean, we used to get pretty good deal on the fuel because you get a farm credit, right? But not now, fuel costs is same, basically the same as what you pay the pumps, you know? It's, uh, yeah, you gotta take a big breath because I tell you something, everything's going through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I want to thank Gary once again for having us out here at Glen Gary Bison, giving us a tour, showing us some of his incredible animals and providing us with some incredible meat to take home. I urge you to come out and check this out. I also want to extend a massive thank you to our friends at the Alberta Prosperity Project for making this possible. We simply couldn't get out here and tell these stories without their support. Again, go check them out at albertaprosperityproject.com. As always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. For Rebel News, this has been The Buffalo. I'm Adam Sos. Well, one of the ways you can ensure that things don't go horribly wrong on the political side anyways is by ensuring that there is independent media out there asking tough questions and holding governments to account. One way that you can support us as independent media and keep us doing this important work is by subscribing to Rebel News Plus. It costs eight bucks a month or less if you subscribe for a year, it gives you access to some of our exclusive member-only content, and it gives you ad-free access to our website. Plus, there's always a seven-day trial period so you can give it a try. Hopefully you'll like it and you'll keep it. Again, Rebel News Plus at rebelnews.com.